Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Desktop December Part 21 where I'll be reviewing the Trinity Desktop. The Trinity is a fork of KDE version 3 and it started out live in around 2010 I do believe. So I'm looking at it here in q os Now q os is one of the few distros actually using this desktop. Can't see it around particularly much although it is packaged up for most of the Linux distributions. So it's one of the rare times that KDE has been forked. I don't see many of them, hence why we literally only have a few desktops actually covering the Qt desktops, and uh, even most of those are not specifically related to KDE, they just happen to be using the Qt framework. But yeah, this is the Qt 3 framework. So we're expecting something a little bit old-fashioned here, even though this desktop looks like Windows 7, looks and behaves like Windows 7. Starting with a look at the memory usage, we can see we're using up 226 meg of RAM, although 498 is the total usage, but some of that is cached onto the hard drive. That is using slightly less than the LX Qt desktop. <laughs> Surprising. So the default styling of the application launcher is the Windows 7 style. That's uh, distro specific really with, with what uh, q for os have chosen. You can change to a different style here using this welcome screen. So we've got the KDE Classic kickoff menu. Yeah, that's a bit more of a style that I'm used to, although I prefer the dash really, but uh, that's not an option here. So I've got one other option here, the classic menu. Change to that. Yeah, okay. So a bit of variety there. Let's go back to the kickoff menu. And I can even change the menu structure there as well, but that's a distro specific feature. So I've got a text searcher to find applications in the kickoff menu. So let's try for Chrome. C H R. Got there in the end. Okay, and I can select either with the mouse or the keyboard with the up and down arrow keys. Remember with the kickoff launcher early in the version of KDE 4, it, it, it takes about three letters before it starts picking up an application. So let's just see if that was a fluke or not. And I'm going to try for the Conqueror web browser. So KO, I know we've got console, so okay, it's, it's slightly more responsive. So we can start getting things within two key presses, but uh, you've not picked up the one I'm after. K-O-N-Q, Conqueror, sure. right the way down the list. Come on now. Looking at the layout of the desktop, so we've got a launcher for a couple of applications here. Do we have the arrow snap effects? No, we don't appear to. Now, is that feature missing because it's a distro specific feature, or, or is it missing because that feature wasn't in KDE version 3? Don't know. You notice when I go to move an application, it goes partially transparent. I really like that feature. You can see what's underneath it. So if you've got something running in the background, Rather than moving the application out of the way, you can just click there. Oh, how's the progress doing? Oh, it's not done yet. Go back to what you're doing. On the right hand side, we have some of the system controls. So we've got a clipboard, network, sound and volume, and an analog clock, which when you click on it, has a calendar. Right clicking on the desktop brings up some of the settings, doesn't it? Uh, so how we're sorting the icons, configuring the desktop. That's just uh, the background, some behavior, multiple desktops. Oh, good, so I can have multiple desktops here, but it's not a feature that's been enabled by default in q for os Screensaver. Ooh, fancy. And some of the settings on display. I can highlight multiple icons here. Now that was a feature that was missing in the Lumina desktop. Let's open up the file manager, which is the Conqueror web browser as a view of the file manager. I just can't get over this Windows layout here, but again, that's a distro specific feature, not a desktop specific feature. So going to pictures. Oh, that's opened up in the browser. Have I got any other picture viewers? Open with Gwenview. Here we go. Now, the newer version of Gwenview does allow a little bit of editing. Let's see how much that features in this version. And it doesn't really appear I've got quite the extent of editing that does appear in the newer version of Gwenview, which I can crop and rotate. Seems like I can just rotate with this version. Oh, that's a shame, but uh, yeah, it's an image viewer, so can't expect too much really. In the music folder, Gala, freed from desire, yay. So it opens in VLC, yeah, okay, get on with it. But I don't wanna actually play the music, so, so multimedia integration at all? No, that didn't exist back then. But you've got the music controls in the system settings here in the VLC. So opening up a script, so in Kate, we do have the code highlighting in different colors. Excellent. Now to look at the system settings. So let's try for SETT control center. I guess that's it. 
appearance and themes. Try for colors. Oh, it looks like we can have a few different color schemes here. Let's try that. Uh, okay. Got a blue scheme. Ooh, different. CDE. <laughs> oh, that takes us back, doesn't it? It looks a bit nicer than the Divid view that uh, CDE had. Let's change it back to something like that. Yes, that, that's a bit easier to see. Oh, we can change the widgets. So that implies that we can have widgets on the desktop. But how do I get them? Ooh. I'm thinking like the newer version of KDE and I'm going down the wrong route if I'm thinking too new. Fonts. Yep. It's fairly standard. Look switcher. Uh, you can be able to switch between a modern and smooth interface. Oh, that's, that's a distro specific feature. Anything else desktop specific here? Well, we've got this TDE component, Trinity Desktop Environment Components. File Manager. Ah, so can I have Dolphin? Oh no, that's just setting the file manager preferences for Conqueror. You can see I'm missing Dolphin, can't you? Oh, I do like Dolphin. TDE Performance. Minimize memory usage. Different. TDE Resources. That's uh, something a bit over and above what I'm looking at for a desktop review, really. Looks like we can do some configuration on the panel, so we can change its position. Let's change it to the side. Apply. Ah, excellent. So we can change the length, the size. Yep. I see it defaults to an iconified view for the applications if it can't quite fit the text in. And there's some other configuration options we can change here. Hiding it, the items in the menus, and the appearance. How does LibreOffice Writer look? Does that render OK? Yes, it does. Looks perfectly fine. I was going to check out what Dolphin looked like, but this is KDE 4, so it's a Qt 4 framework. Uh, so we're going to get 110 new packages. Uh, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, so basically going to end up with Qt 4 framework being installed. Well, let's see what happens. Although it doesn't give a fair representation of what the Qt 5 framework is going to look like. Well then, let's do the honours. Let's see what it looks like. Well, that seems to have rendered perfectly fine as well. So there's no conflict between the Qt 4 and the Qt 3 frameworks on here. So that was a look at the Trinity desktop environment. I think the biggest stumbling block for me is that I'm used to the newer versions of KDE. So going back to the old KDE version 3, is it's just too backwards for me. Which is strange because when I look at the comparison to GNOME, I prefer using the old GNOME 2 dot desktop instead of the GNOME 3 desktop. Strange how that goes, isn't it? I suppose because I was used to the old version 2 of GNOME, but when I came across the KDE, it was version 4. So I suppose it just depends what you're used to, doesn't it, really? If in the time you've been using Linux, you use the older versions of KDE, then I think you certainly could appreciate the Trinity desktop experience. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.